shaved. It was the first time I shaved in two weeks. Bam, we're live. Two minutes early. So we can talk about anything except what this show is about until the show starts in two minutes. How you doing, JR? What's up, JR? You didn't pay your electricity bill? It's so bad in here, dude. <laughs> it is so bad. What's up, buddy? What's it's up, coming buddy? In. Coming in hot. What are you were jealous because Taylor's picture always looks like ass and you wanted to compete with it? You're like, I'll show him. Like, wow. Okay. Should I'll I turn show... that light back there on? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Definitely don't do that. <laughs> Matthew Souza straight from the gym. Uh Taylor Self from Self Made Training Program. The best. I am now convinced. The but best training program it. in how do you the know? World. How do you know? Uh, because I've been reading the reviews and I've been talking to a lot of people and I've been asking, are you guys blowing smoke? And can no, I send I, you, can I send you a link to it so yeah. that you can do it for free? Oh, will you give me, is it, do you have a scale 50 year old version? We're going to talk about that tonight, but okay. Blue, well, let's you, just start there right now. Does your, does your program, what, what if I'm, what I'm, I'm I offer scales for everything. So like, let me, uh, for example, if you I'm terrified off, to get injured, but I want my heart rate high and I want to just work on my guns a little. My goal is to injure you. Um, <laughs> hey, well, my goal is to wear a tank top one day when JR's on the show. Let so my I know kids this shave is, my back this, and my shoulders and come on with a tank top and everyone. This be like, is really Fuck. janky, but if you pull the app, it's twenty bucks a month. You pull the app up and this is a day. You have competitive, class, and then the notes for each. And if you pull the notes up, I have like basically equipment substitutes. Movement scales, loading and volume scale. I'm on it. Yeah, do it. Me and my wife will do it. I'll and my kids will do it. Dope. Yeah, hundred percent. Send to me, and I can call you if like if uh, there's a piece of equipment I yeah. don't have or something. Dude. I'll just call you and be like, "Yo." Yeah, everyone. I, I mean, so many people DM me or message me or text me and ask, and I try to be like you know within minutes responsive about it. I think a lot of people in the maybe some people in the comments who do the program can speak to that, but I you know I try to give as much coaching as you can get. I mean. Yeah, I try to give as much coaching as you can give via like an online platform. People send videos and stuff, and I, you know, try to correct. As I much want as people to start it. accusing me of doing uh, being on California hormones. Natty, you really not. want to yep. be accused of that. Natty, here's what you got to do. This is what not. I started doing. We've got yeah. a cold plunge. I've been getting in it every morning for for four minutes, and then going right into cardio. How cold? How saw, cold? How cold? Forty degrees. So it's not like the coldest yeah. in the world. But, oh, fuck mm. you, dude. You can't tell the difference between 40 and 35, dude. There's no difference. Your dick yeah, falls can. off. That's the, way, that's the way his wife treats him. His <laughs> wife keeps the temperature, <laughs> the temperature around degree. between yeah, 35 and 40. He's an expert. Wim Hof over here, dude. Yeah, well, my dick's getting bigger, okay? It's already grown in four days. <laughs> oh, but what what are the implications of doing that ice bathing and going straight into a workout? There's a study. There's a, a study in Japan in the 90s that doing cold exposure right into um, low-resistance cardio, specifically on a bike. Thank you. Spiked testosterone levels mm. and luteinizing hormone. And you know yeah, it's and, that, and that's what all I could do or else I'd hurt myself. Sorry, go ahead, Susan. No, as I say, you know it's true because when you think Japanese, you think really high cardio and testosterone level. So <laughs> <laughs> Racist. Hey, yeah, is it bugging point. anyone that I'm not centered? I, this is the first time I've been in the studio in, in two weeks and I'm not. Somebody like, said I looked like a light bulb when I take my hat off. So this would, does this improve the lighting? <laughs> no, he's a thumb. He's a thumb. <laughs> Taylor. Taylor, do you know what LH does? Do you know what luteinizing hormone is? No, I don't does? know shit about that. I just saw it on Rogan and got a That's boner. That's a big word. Well, it's Scott a, Schweitzer, or Clydesdale Media. Hi, good evening. Go a, ahead, Jeff. It's, it's a very important sex hormone in females. Cool. Is it? What a, is it? Is what it is it called? Is it what's an it unimportant called? hormone you for men? Interest? Yeah. What, what's it called? I'm gonna let's Google that. <laughs> luteinizing hormone. Taylor was. Taylor My wife's was got too much of that. Way too much of that. I'm he like, was singing the praises of this study, saying it does all this great stuff, like increased luteinizing hormone. Okay, I said <laughs> testosterone first, you fucker. What does it do? What, what does luteinizing hormone do? Plays an important role in sexual development and function in women. No wonder your pussy's so sweet, Taylor. <laughs> I was Holy say, shit! Does it make your pussy better? <laughs> I need hey, that too, it dude. also triggers Welcome the release the of show. egg from the ovary. Yeah, AKA, <laughs> this is known yeah. as ovulation. AKA ovulation and menstruation. Yes. Good dude. What kind of guy doesn't want to ovulate in 2022? JR is a straight. Uh, yeah. Well, Facts. here's the thing, JR. He was he's he's speaking to the women in the audience and the men. It'll cause you to fucking luteinize and fucking raise your fucking sperm count. That's what he meant to say. Yeah, your dick gets bigger, pussy gets wetter. Start the cold plunge experience. My oh, goodness, boy. JR I mean, really please, was a nurse. Please, please put him to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> JR uh, was a nurse. Wow. 
Um, so you you still oh you keep your license active, huh, Jr. It's still active, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We didn't talk about that when you were on the show, but when I was doing the research, I, I was kind. Of, I'm always impressed when people do that. What is that? A safety net for you in case your shit goes sideways? Unfortunately, people will always get sick. There's a lot of job security in that. Right. Right. So uh, a, a net. You pro- What'd you say, Taylor? That was no, Susa. I said oh. it sounds like a Plan B. Touché. Yeah, Plan B. Touché, touché. You know how we feel about that, dude. Speaking of certifications, the L four registration opened up today, and I know someone very, very good at coaching, and they're on. I, they work for CrossFit, and they failed the beta. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it scares the fuck out of me. I was gonna register. I was like, you know, about to register. Then I hear about that. I'm like, ah. I gotta study some more. I don't think I'm ready yet. Is it You're the ready. same format? Did they say? Is it like you go sit down and actually take a test, or is no. it, are you like up and moving and coaching in front it's of? It's only that you essentially coach. To, you go to an affiliate that you've never been to before. You don't know anyone there, um, okay. and there's a flow master or an evaluator, and you just teach two CrossFit classes. You teach an hour class, and then a little while later, you teach another hour class. They don't say a word to you. You don't get any feedback. They just watch you teach for an hour. <laughs> it's fucking. How, wait, how do they? Wait, how do they do that? You go somewhere? Yeah, you go to another. You register. So, like the one in March, late March is in Marietta, Georgia. It's at a CrossFit affiliate. They, I, I'm assuming they try to make sure that you go to an affiliate you're, you've never been to before. You don't coach at, um, so you don't know the people. And essentially, they, they send you, you know, a workout or two workouts in advance. You get to set, you know, create a class plan, whatever study prepare yourself and then you show up and you fucking coach your class and you get fucking clapped hey you know when you take your driver's test like there's something like you can do so you automatically fail i don't know what it is but it's like if you go over 25 near a park there's like certain things that's just a fail do you guys know what those are yeah if you like run off the curb in pleasanton here it used to be when you take the right turn out if you weren't smart enough to pull all the way out then make the turn and your back tire came off the curb instant fail you just was right uh, yeah. in the parking lot so, so what I, yeah, I was gonna say like when i was when I was taking my driving test, it was if you went off the road at all, any tire on the three point turn, if you hit the barrier at all on the parallel park, How do you if you that? if you like yes. ran a stop yes. sign or you yes. or you or you ran a stop light. Yes. And then I, there was also one, I think that if you parallel park, if you hit the curb, that was that's yeah. an automatic fail. I remember that. Yep. And then I want to say there's something to do with yielding to traffic. Like if you if you yield incorrectly or you do not yield, that's an automatic fail. I heard for the L4, if you don't ask the class the pronouns before you start, you automatically fail. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Just I, saying. Think, I think what they're looking for more than anything are like the six criteria of effective coaching, teaching, seeing, correcting, group presence, uh, or sorry, presence and attitude, group management, and demo. But specifically like when you're teaching a movement or correcting a movement, um, can you see it like in a – like it, it's – there are a lot of criteria they used to judge, and it is really freaking hard. And like I heard, I, number six is yeah. don't hurt their feelings. Don't hurt anyone's feelings. Well, I think it's a <laughs> and challenge. You're never going to pass that, and you're never going to pass that. No, here's the thing: I'm really good at being relentless while also being empathetic to the athlete. I think that's as that's the audience what, here knows. That's, that's hard. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I wonder my if fucking like athletes, they don't take my. Phone. That's horseshit, dude. You, you never nice? guys, do you, you not listen to, to the feedback we give no. you after every podcast? Like stirred it. You want me to be nice? Come pay one hundred sixty-five dollars to join my affiliate, and I'll be nice. All right, all right, fine. Yeah. When he's when he's commentating for free, you can take it in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you pay for. <laughs> exactly. I got yelled at for saying some kids' burpees were slow during Zalos. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, you were you were it was a little more than they were slow. I think someone got called an idiot. Someone else had slow burpees. There were a few. There's someone else was weak. There were a few things. Ta- JR, don't let him off the hook here. There was more than burpees. Dude, were I got slow, a right? spanking. I got a spanking for that. No, I was actually still thinking about that criteria and wondering like how they would score it. Like let's say that you um, there's this this is this do you want to know the scoring? Yeah, you can. I mean, yeah, go ahead. Off the level there's two, I'm two sure. Scores. Right? Effective needs improvement. And if you get needs improvement, it means you failed it. If you get effective, you passed it. And that's it. And essentially, right. Well, this is my question, though. Is it, the, is it the delivery of the verbal, the visual, and the tactile cue? Or is it how the athlete responds to everything. it? Everything. AKA, like, better, worse, same. If it's always same or worse, do you just fail that part? Because everything. You're- well, think if you're giving the same cue and they're responding to it in the same way, and like if you've making the, if you made the choice to go in and correct a fault 
and you give the same cue and they're responding in the same way and you pull away without improving it at least to a degree or changing a cue or getting some sort of improvement, yeah, you're going to get automatic need, fail. You're going to get needs of improvement because it wasn't effective. So it just has to be effective. Like it has to work. And, right. and the, the, sorry, the metrics, like whatever, you know, however many criteria there are and like subcategories that they score you on, it's very detailed. And a little, you know, it's, it's, you know, and Savant, to your point, I thought when you were doing the automatic <laughs> fail, when you started, if you start the class and you don't ask, I thought you were going to say, if there's any injuries or anything, I need to be aware of oh, for individual athletes. Right. Like before you went in and then you went all the way up left field with it. That's why that one got me. So I wonder if you get time before class to like talk to people. Like if you show up, you know, 15 minutes early, you're a coach, you typically talk with your class before they show up a little bit and like get to know people. I wonder if there's room for that. Hey, there might be something like that. There might be something like that. Like if you don't ask what people's injuries are or something like that, it's an automatic fail. There might be something where it's just, and then you, the next 59 minutes don't matter. Hey, what yeah. would be crazy is if they just stopped the class, like 13 minutes in, they're oh, like, wow, dude, yeah, like they, yeah that would, oh, that would, <laughs> You're done. That would well, be so Well, that's the interesting mad. thing now because then we have to ask who are the people taking the class? Right, because if they're just your, if they're just the they're regular class for that members. day and they show up, right, you can't you know necessarily like kick them out. And then also, too, that's interesting. I wonder who. Yeah, that is interesting. Because, like, what if, like, they go up to Susan before they're like, hey, what's your name? Hey, I'm Matt. Cool. How long have you been doing this? I don't know, a few years. Not today, buddy. You're brand new. Get what I'm saying? You're, you're new. And you're mm -hmm. just like, what do you mean? He's yep. like, no, no, you're, you, you tell them this is your first class. No, and see I'm, what they do. I'm I don't think, I, I don't think they would be trying got to Got some really plants in there. Like that, I'm but. sure they have, like, I, I, to be honest, I have no idea how that works. What I, yeah. Uh, if Dave was running it, you know, there would be some people in there. <laughs> I think really uh, flow masters. So the one that I'm aware of, Chuck Carswell was um, the evaluator who is, you know, about as professional as it gets. I, I think, I think they're probably not trying to trick anyone. And what they really want to see is, right. are you actually a master level effective coach? Like, are you effective in all the six criteria and that, and all the sub criteria that go with it? Um, are you effective with your cues? If you see something doesn't work, do you let it go or are you relentless and you do something until it works and move on? But can you do that efficiently, et cetera, all sorts of stuff. To answer hey, that can, guy, any, can anyone take it or do you have to be a level three? You got to be a level three. Have to. Um, uh, get with the programming. If it's any, in uh, chase was a level one staff. If there's anything, uh, if, it's, if it's anything like interning for the level one, for those of you who don't know, when you go take your level one, let's say there's four level one instructors there, including the flow master, there would always be one or not always, but often there would be one or two, um, interns there. And those interns, the way it works with the level one is you show up and you do one internship and then you do another internship. And then basically they tell you, you made the team or you didn't make the team. And the fail rate for making it on the team is very, very high. What, what's it called? Attrition. Mm -hmm. And so it's very difficult to make it on that team. And occasionally someone will get a, th a third, like if someone's walking the line, they'll give someone a third internship. And what Chase is saying, if it's anything like interning for the level one staff, there are 100% automatic fail things you can do. Like slap someone on the ass or something. That's not okay. That's not a good tactile cue. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> That's not a good tactile cue no. for the kettlebell swing. Wham. No. Okay. No, to Taylor's a level five um, coach. I'm hey, you know what I'm three. curious about those level ones? And Savon, maybe you can speak to this in the early days. How much of that criteria meant, like, did you just fit the culture and the DNA of what you wanted disseminated throughout the CrossFit community? Because, like, and, you've always and, said the L1 is, like, that's where that DNA spreads and that's where that – Nugget stays tight. We all I've well. Heard, I've look, heard look, a lot. I've look heard what Chase is saying. I cut interns just how they said hi to us in the first meeting. Oh, yeah. I, I heard a that's lot of like, that. yeah, I've heard a lot of stuff like that where essentially just important as you being really good at CrossFit and knowing CrossFit was are they do they like you or not? And do they want to work with you over the course of a weekend? And that is important. Uh, like, if you're a dick, no one wants to work with you for yeah. a weekend. Tell athletes stupid. to move poorly on purpose. Uh, um, yeah, that would be, yeah, I get it. That's like t someone hits the curb and you're like, good job. Mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, yeah, I, re I remember hearing that too in meetings where they would say, Hey, that that's completely unacceptable. They even tell you that in your L one, you as a coach, it, um, when you go to your level one, I mean, you guys know how much I love it, but that it, I don't guess I don't ever talk about this detail, but that's the thing, man. Those guys are hype men. They are f those people you go in there and I, I don't know. I don't know who do you, I'm just going to use some old school people, but you go in there and it's uh, Joe Westerland, Stefan Roche and Russell Berger. And those dudes are present. And no one's talking to you without looking right into your cranium. And they're like, <laughs> you're, it's like, 
I mean, those guys would sell, sell fucking fire to the devil. I mean, they are fucking present and they are, they have their eyes on you and their undivided attention. And it's, um, yeah, it's a real deal. Ooh, that's pretty. Uh, here we go from the CrossFit training website. By the way, this is a uh, programming show where we're supposed to be talking about the programming at the legends competition. I, I assume we're going to get to it. Just after like our sponsors. I, I do look alike that we've burned 15 minutes already. Uh, the Certified CrossFit Level 4 Coach Performance Evaluation is a one-day assessment of a trainer's ability to effectively coach CrossFit movements and run a successful class. This evaluation is for experienced trainers who have been coaching CrossFit in group settings for several years. I think several, what is that, three or more? Three or more. Uh, the credential is earned by trainers who have significant coaching experience, a comprehensive educational background, and CrossFit's prerequisite certification, the Certified CrossFit Level 3 Coach trainer credential for more information call nicole carroll let me give you her home phone number <laughs> uh, and, 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 and i i would be uh, remiss to not mention that the, one of the juggernauts in the fitness industry if not i i can't, can't sing nicole's praises enough just uh, as a uh trainer and what she's done for planet earth period it's 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 not even like we would need three shows to talk about how great she is. I've invited her on the show a few times. We've danced around a little bit. Um, hopefully, we'll get her on soon. But she is a remarkable uh, human being. And for those of you who don't know, I should plug this also. Her husband, uh, Tosh, is in a boat. <laughs> oh, he's this, rowing to fucking, this is fucking nuts. Vietnam or something. Yeah, he's in a boat right now rowing across the Pacific Ocean. And he's doing it with uh, I thought it was uh, the Atlantic. Was it one of them? He's rowing across one of the big oceans, and oh, that's the little pussy one, dude. They're um, rowing to like fucking England, dude. And uh, he's—I don't know who the other guys are, but one of the guys Chris is Smith a is another guy, former Navy SEAL Chris Smith, who is also a trainer, and maybe even a flow master. He owns he owns a uh, Trident CrossFit. And... Oh, look, there's the race. Yeah, Holy wow, God. watch out for that whirlpool, guys. <laughs> So you can go to that app, by the way, the, um, that team uh, shut up and row, and you can um, you can follow what place they're in. There's an app, and you can track them as they row across um, the Atlantic. Oh yeah, there's their boat. Crazy! Do, Look do at think, Rogue. Do you think Look they at Rogue. Rogue. Yep. Do you Look think at they Rogue? Like, how do they how do they wash themselves? Do you think they like do any in, of that? in the ocean? <laughs> Dude, Tosh hasn't taken a bath in five years. What the fuck are you talking? I about? I think it's continuous uh, rowing in shifts for like the whole entire race. So I don't even know if there would be an allowance of time where they, they would be able to have a bath. Holy probably shit! They should have got. Susan, you told two. Jethro that we're having Nicole, Greg, and Liver King back to back next week. Dude, he Dude. said that was – I'm sorry. It was a private DM. Sorry. Oh, three Navy SEALs and a Marine. Okay. From Chasing Arm. Okay. Uh, and I don't know what – I think Tosh won – I wish I knew my medals. I think he won the Navy Cross. Silver Star, I thought. Whatever the highest thing you can fucking get in the Navy, he got that. And there's a documentary about him, a two-hour documentary that is crazy. Is there a documentary about him? I've read yes. the wiki. I bought the DVD and watched it when, right after I met him. It's crazy. Yeah, didn't he? He fucking, yeah, whatever. He's walking around with like a cigarette in his mouth. like, <laughs> like It's like out of a fucking John Wayne movie. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. This is all their food. I think there are only 150 or so, something like that, like 150 or less level fours in the world. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Uh, were there any, are there any Jewish guys on the boat? <laughs> hmm. Why? Why? Just because I just wanted to check their DEI DEI quota. <laughs> uh, this past um, what are we talking about? This past weekend was an event. Uh, we had um Jason Grubb and Jamie Latimer. She has another last name too, Jamie. Jamie, I just know it's Jamie Latimer from uh, from this show and Jason Grubb from this show. And they both came on uh, three three or four days in a row in the morning to chat with us about the event. The event was called the Legends Competition. It is for Masters athletes at 30 and above or 35 and above? 35. 35 and above. So the categories were similar to the games, 35 to 39, 40 to 44, 45 to 49, et cetera. You know how it plays out. And a shitload of people showed up. 
a ton of people. Who throws this event? Do we know? Is it Mayhem? Mm-hmm. Uh, but 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 it's not a mayhem event. I think they were just using the mayhem facility. I think the company is called Legends, right? Just like let. And it looks like Hamilton Road uh, Production, the same people who do the games, Charlie Doobie's company, were the people who did the uh, video for it. They had Sean Woodland there, uh, Annie Sakamoto doing the commentary. Uh, a, a, a real yeah, look at that thing. Yeah, this is legit. And that's looking down into the gym that is CrossFit Mayhem, and they competed. And one of my wow. questions the whole time was, I was thinking about who does the programming for these events and, and how Whoa. they do programming for Masters and how it differs. If it's just, hey, you just lighten the weight and you and you go. Yeah, that's what I say. <laughs> so <clears throat> this uh, show, 35 plus, you guys can't do muscle ups. <laughs> Sorry. So there you go. There's Jason Grubb. Uh, took first place in the competition. Uh, Jamie Latimer took uh, second place in her division. Crazy impressive. The only thing that I saw that was weird, and I'm sure there were a lot of things that were weird. There's Jamie. Right in the middle there. Uh, right next to the chick in the pink. The only thing that I saw that was weird there, and, and I guess we could start here, um, was the fact that in one of the competitions in one of the ca- age categories, you could either do handstand walks or bear crawls. Whoa, whoa. You could do either or? Yeah, and, and, it, and it didn't count as scaled. I don't mean to start with something negative, but I, I mean I mean to, but what? I don't mean to. Love the throwback. Group? Hey, are this isn't sure the throwback correct? shirt. I just got this. What are you talking about, Dick? <laughs> this isn't the throwback shirt. I just got this. Yeah, yeah. Are you- the throwback shirt. Are you um, sure about that? Like, like for certain can, that they can, let can you can, can you pull that up? Yeah, you're disturbed by that, right? Because then it's not a competition, right? Anymore. It, it sounds like the fucking uh, fuck, what did that what did that fucker do? I don't I can't remember his name. It sounds like the guy Hiller destroyed the Masters athlete who. Like, yeah, but that, but that, but that, but it also to, said that in the games notes too. I to know him. it said you could either do pistols or box step ups. Like, what if you go to sudden impact, the workout, sudden impact. I think that's the one you're talking about. That's the only one with a handstand um, movement other than strict handstand push-ups in the final. But sudden impact is wall walks. And what's really cool about the way that these workouts, at least the differences in divisions are presented, is there's a chart underneath every flow and every workout explanation. So you've got the workout, the time cap, how many, how it's scored, the workout flow. And then beneath, if you scroll down, you'll see the differences in divisions. What's workout flow mean? So it's like saying that um, at this call of three, two, one, go, the athlete will go to the barbell and perform one deadlift. After one deadlift, they'll return to the wall, perform one wall walk, and then return to the barbell for two deadlifts and so on for six minutes. Okay. So, so kind of like a written out, it, it written out verbally. Right. And a lot of, I, they don't do that in a lot of events, huh? They don't do that for the games, do they? They don't have a flow. They do have a flow, but it's usually briefed to the athletes and their coaches at the athlete briefing briefings. Right, right, and not to us. Uh, Fifty plus didn't do sudden Correct. impact. Uh, uh, Harry uh, Harry Johnson is saying that Mayhem programmed this event. And when we had Rich on um, the most recent show he did, we actually asked him that, and he said that they had some say, but they didn't have a hundred percent control. So there were some parameters they had to work within. All right. Um, JR, um, what is the difference in programming for people who are older? And, and, and when do they get older? What is older? Well, let me answer that with a question for you. Yeah. Athletes' needs vary by what? Uh, degree, not degree, kind. Degree, not kind. Right. So here's my question. And Bill, I mean, I hope he's watching this, but he can chime in on a lot of stuff. There's something he's really passionate about being a master's athlete and having a lot of opinions about how they should do the program design. Do you tell someone that of the 10 general physical skills, flexibility is important until you turn 60 and then that's no longer a skill that's important? No. No. You tell them that strength is important until they're a certain age and then they don't need to work on it? No. So a lot of people would argue that it shouldn't change. That, yeah, sure, as we age, some things will deteriorate a little, but telling people that when they turn 50 years old, they shouldn't have to squat with something over their head anymore 
doesn't make any sense from the foundation of CrossFit. Okay, let me throw out some other things out there. Go, how about go upside down? Things especially that are more so kinesthetic awareness, that are more so skills that you can acquire, you can acquire into your as late a years as you want. So I think if anything, gymnastics <clears throat> movements should be something that stays, should be something that we want to let people showcase, that we allow people to showcase into those really later master's years. Look at the games this year. Every division did some form, some form of pegboard climb. Even the oldest age division had a line, and they said, hey, take the two pegs, get them above this line, go back down. That's a rep. But, but all, the age div, all the age divisions did ring muscle-ups at the games this year. And I know this event isn't at CrossFit Games, but I think we can, we can, we can let that lead by example and let us kind of see what's important as far as aging and what's still possible as we age. What about, what about danger and injuries? I think that if you sign up for a competition like this and for the CrossFit Games, you're playing a sport more so than you're just performing for health and wellness. Are, are there any movements was, that are – go ahead. Go ahead, Taylor. No, I was going to say I'm glad you answered in that fashion because I, I get frustrated when you – again, you see like age divisions are like, oh, I can't do that. You know, I'm, my mobility. I'm like, well, then – well, it's a sport. If you're competing, then it's a sport. So if you can't do it, then fuck off. <laughs> Right. Fair, fair. Um, and, and, and are there any exceptions to this rule? Are there any movements that you re that, uh, that you see? Um, let's pick the, let's pick the oldest age division just to make it easy on ourselves. Is there any 65 and up that, that division goes infinitely, right? You could be 90 years old. It doesn't go 65 to 69, right? Right. 60 plus six. Oh, it's 60 plus. Are there any movements in that, that division that wouldn't be, okay for that division that you might see at the CrossFit games? I don't think there are movements that necessarily need to be omitted completely. I think there are movements that in particular volumes can be irresponsible. Yeah. For I instance, also if you, for instance, if you have a workout for 35 to 39, that has 500 double unders, maybe not a great thing to program for 60 plus just because of the number of, you know, Achilles tendons, just calf injuries, soleus, whatever. Um, but what I do think is important is that this doesn't mean that they can't do double unders. They can, but maybe instead of doing five sets of a hundred, they do five sets of 25. Were you going to say something, Taylor? I was going to say, wow, lost my train. Okay. I was going to say, I, I think what we are seeing here in terms of, okay, what are we programming for masters versus what can masters athletes actually do versus what is safe or correct to program for masters, I think is just the evolution of what human beings are capable of. And I think it's going to take a longer time to see that play out for older athletes uh, than it has for the individual division, because the individual, you know, 10 years ago in CrossFit or in 2007 or prior to 2007, were we asking 65 plus year olds to handstand walk and do things like that in a competitive setting? Was the world demanding that or asking that of any athletes that age or to be able to, to be capable of what now a 65 plus CrossFit athlete is capable of? Uh, no, at least for the most part, no. So then when we introduced that, it's like, Oh, we're not really sure what these people are capable of. Maybe we're going to be a little nervous with, or cautious with what we program for them. And then maybe in 20 or 30 years when Matt Fraser is a 65 plus athlete, he can probably do quite a bit more than a lot of the 65 plus athletes of today's uh, environment or, but, but you still have you still have workouts that even show up in the individual, like the skills medley, for example, that only two or three people finish. And so conceivably that still could happen in the masters also in the 60, yeah. in the 60 plus. And I even remember, I don't know what year it was at the CrossFit games, but they had them do handstand walks. And a lot of the masters couldn't even do them. I remember, I remember James Fitzgerald, the 2007 individual champ, couldn't do the handstand walk in the um, masters comp. So, 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 so it happens. But, but I guess what you're saying is that goes back to degree. You're saying it's the exact. You, you should program. Um, you, you should. You, you can program anything as long as it fit. Uh, uh, you can program any movement. I, I think. In theory, you can program any movement. In practice, it's really hard to do. What I'm saying is what master's athletes are going to be capable of in 10 or 15 or 20 years, it's going to be way more than what they're capable of now. Okay. And in the same respect, I think you know we have a, we have a competition like this that used in-person qualifiers to get people there. Now, 
each of those qualifiers, if they weren't told to do the same programming, we don't know that, you know, often like when we talk about the semifinals having different program design, we don't know that they're being screened for the games because they all have different programming. But what did the 65 plus year olds do this year in the semifinals to get to the CrossFit games? They had legless rope climbs program. There's that famous video of that lady doing the legless rope climb and crushing it. Well, why was that done? Boz was screening them for the pegboard in some form or fashion. Previous, previous stages I think should be used to screen more so than anything else. You're screening from the open to quarters. You're screening from quarters to semis. You're screening athletes to make sure that when they get to the games, the challenges presented to them are within the realm of possibility based on what you've already seen them do. And, and then there's always that, I don't remember the exact words, but basically it's that, you know, that really cool interview that Dave did the, the year he put in the hundred pound dumbbell in the regionals. And he said, one of the things I enjoy doing is giving the athletes something that I know they can do, but they're not sure they can do and them Im impressing themselves out on the floor. And so the masters probably get that a lot. I'm guessing. Right. I think it goes back to that quote that Dave was famous for saying all the time, you know, that the games is not for showcasing the athlete. The games is for testing the athletes. And that should go for all divisions. But should it go for all competitions? Yeah. I mean, you saw, I think Brian put up a graphic where he compared the CrossFit Games winners, the Masters Fitness Collective winners, and the Legends winners, and kind of said, hey, look at the, you know, look at the crossover. Look at the athletes that place on the podium in all three, or in two of the three, or just in one. So they're being com compared in some respects, in the same way that I think a lot of people would say who won Rogue, who won Wadapalooza, who won Dubai, you know, were there, w was there any carryover? And I think it's great that they're bringing more attention to all these masters age divisions. It's providing them with more opportunities to showcase what they can do. Because if you look at the games and you say, well, why didn't they make them do this? And why didn't they make them do this? But we're all agreeing that until we see what they're capable of, we don't know. Well, having competitions like this is a way to show yeah, they can do this. Okay, cool. We'll take note of that for next season. Do you know what I think the most interesting class is? If I were going to watch any Masters, hmm. it would be it would be the oldest division. If I if I had the time, it's incredible. To well, yeah, watch something other than the individual. The next the next I, w I wouldn't go to I wouldn't go to uh, thirty to thirty five or thirty five to thirty nine. I would go do at the games. Do they have a sixty five plus? Plus, yeah, yes, yeah. So at the games, yeah, that's the division you want to see. That's where you're going to see some weird shit. That's where you're going to see people as a 20 year old man. There's going to be some 68 year old woman doing something that you're like, what? And, and even if you're not impressed by it, I promise you by the time you're 50, you will be impressed by it. You know what I mean? Like now that I'm, when I was 34, I wasn't impressed by it. Now that I'm 50, I'm like, oh shit, I get it. I get it. Um, can we, can we pull up the first workout? Mr. Souza. Yeah, so nine scored total events for the <laughs> youngest days divisions, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Nine, and, and what about the oldest division? How, how many uh, – were there also nine workouts? I think there were only seven. Someone in the comments can, can tell me. I'm not 100% on that. Okay, Does so Meta that would – would... <laughs> Does what, Meta what? Musil sponsor the Masters Cup? <laughs> um they should hey so there you go right there right that's something to be um that's something to be wary of right there so the older division might get fewer workouts that might be one way that you manage the programming fewer workouts for, sure. for yeah. the older people okay so the first workout max, max distance row uh, uh for for seven minutes yep so the score is total meters accumulated and they do seven minutes on each concept two machine with one minute rest in between and they add the meters up and Whoever has the most wins. Uh, Taylor, just as a workout, do you like this? Uh, I just prefer things where you can race more realistically if you're going to test like a long time domain. It's, I mean, the, to test fitness, it's great. To showcase on a competition floor or to stream it or to create some sort of spectacle, it's terrible. Um, but I don't necessarily think that that's what they cared the most about. I think they wanted a long workout, probably a long workout that was pretty easy because they had a billion divisions. Um, and this is, you know, it's a, probably about as easy of a long workout as you can create. Uh, JR thoughts. 
Uh, same same question. Do, do you like this workout as the first workout for a test for the age divisions? For well, no, no, just for as a workout. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think for for the race aspect of it, it's probably the, not the most exciting thing for the spectators or the athletes, unless they could look up at pace boats and pace bikes the whole time they were going. But something that it does do is it checks the box of something longer, something over twenty minutes, which I think a competition of this magnitude, you you got to have something over twenty. Um, other than that, it is kind of cool because like. Um, rinse and repeat it's a way to compare all divisions doing the same thing so you could stack everyone up and say hey there's a dude that's 51 that would have finished third overall on this workout which is always fun to do compared okay let me let me throw this out there why not do um a five minutes distance row five minute biker five minute uh, max max distance skier and then and then a, a final event that's five minutes where we can actually see them racing I guess at that point it doesn't matter because we would need to, we would already need to know their scores from the first three. So, I, so I think it's too complicated because of how many divisions and people that had, how I, many I people? don't think they could possibly do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, would you, would you, would you program this at an event for any reason? Uh, Taylor, can we, JR, would you, you go first. Uh, instead of making it AMRAP style, I would, um, make it, um, priority of distance or calories and i would make them get off get off and go to the next machine so you could at least see who was winning task priority rather than time uh taylor do you agree with that yeah i'd I'd be do the same way if i had to do a row into a biker and do a ski i would just make it like i don't know it it looks to me like it's like a four or three k four nah less than that Uh, i don't know all right um and, and, would, and would that change people's approach to the workout if you did that? Yeah. Uh, well, if you change it from meters to calories, you do change the way you approach it, right? Because you're rewarded for higher power output when you're rowing, skiing, biking for calories versus for distance. So there is strategically some things that you do differently. Okay. Uh, workout number, uh, anything else on this? Work, uh, let's look at workout number two. Oh, so so that one, just to reiterate what you were saying, that workout number one was the same for everybody, all the age divisions. Right. And so you could compare. I wonder who did the best at that. I, w- I wonder if it was the, the, the youngest group or if there was someone in one of the older groups that, that did the best at that. Maybe someone will say in the, um, in the comments. Um, workout number two, let me ask you this before. Is there someone in the CrossFit space who is the master of master's programming? Is there someone that's known like, hey, that guy does incredible master's programming? Is there a coach? Like, like we know, like for instance, we know Brute's a great camp, you know, for coaching games athletes. We're going to assume that Mayhem's a good camp for uh, coaching games athletes. Is there someone who's like, yeah, this, if you're a master's, this is where you go. These are the guys you want to be with. And, and someone maybe in the same category for programming actual events. Well, I know Chase programmed one of the in-person qualifiers for this competition. And just looking over the programming for that, it's, it's about as good as you can get. What, what do you mean? One of these workouts Chase programmed? No, no, so, no so the way it worked is there were, there were five in-person <laughs> qualifiers. And they were awarded spots to legends based on the amount of participants in each age division. And then they used an online format to fill in the rest of the spots. Okay. So you're throwing Chase's name in the bucket. Yeah. As a nomination. Taylor, do you got anybody? Uh, I like these three in the comments. Neil Maddox, Bill Grundler, and JR. But also Chase. All right. Uh, Workout number two. Uh, And and do we we know – well, uh, uh, Susan, if you end up finding out which two, which if which two workouts the oldest division dropped, that would so be you can see it. If you just scroll down and you look in that chart, if there's an NA by that division, it means they didn't do it. So oh, just, okay. Yeah. So let's just do that real quick and see. So everyone did this, right? Okay. I thought that stood for a nice ass. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Uh, a workout number. Oh, okay. He's going through all of them right now. Okay, so workout five. Oh, that's nice. They left it for the last until the last two workouts, and then we get to workout number. Okay, and so this is workout number. Is this eight? No, I think that's six, um, seven. Seven. Okay. Okay. Seven. okay. The last one's a back to back. So fifty nine so. and over got six events. Okay. Over Fair how enough. many days do you know? 
<clears throat> well, no, it looks like they did the last two. So go go to the last workout, old school, one and two. Oh, wow. It looks like they did those. Okay, so it's only one workout. It looks it's like old. one less unless we just missed one earlier in the week on th one of the Thursday or Friday workouts. Okay, this was a three-day uh, competition. Oh, no, four-day. Four-day, yeah, for most of the divisions. Four-day. That's interesting, right? You would think for, for max participation, they would have made it a two-day competition. They made it a four-day competition, and they still killed it. It was, it was four days for all athletes? It's, yeah, the, the one we just looked at, Endless Ergs, and then Workout 2 was Thursday. Ended on Sunday. So I had those guys on four days. Yeah, four days, Jamie. Four days, Jason, at the beginning of my shows. You're welcome. Uh, workout number two. Uh, 15, 12, 9, dumbbell thrusters, dumbbell box step-ups. 100-something, uh, is that the torque tank? It is. <sighs> torque tank push after each round in 25-foot increments. Okay, I like that. See, alpaca, alpaca. And uh, nine-minute uh, time cap. Uh, Mr. Taylor. Right away, what do you see? The the box step ups. Uh, that's because it's Masters event. What do you mean? Versus a step over? Oh no, because they're carrying the weights. So everyone, even if that was individual, they'd be doing box step ups too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you think about this workout? <clears throat> I I like the workout alone. It's it's disgusting. I mean, it's a little. It's a lot of legs. It's redundant. A lot of legs redundant, but. A lot of events program redundant movements. I personally can sometimes be partial to redundancy. Um, I, I mean, I love it. It's just a classic 15, 12, 9. Um, did they finish the workout with the tank push? Does that say? It, it yeah. looks like it if it was, it looks, it looks like it because they do the tank push four times. I think Correct. that's the only thing I'm, you know, not as big of a fan with is that they finish the workout with the tank push and the tank pushes down and back twice like you know four you times 25 no 25 down 25 back 25 right. down 25 back so down and back twice i i think it's just meh i'm not a huge fan of finishing a workout like that because then once you get like three or four athletes that are all in the sled push you're not sure who's on their last 25 increment and who just started it's hard to follow um uh, but you do like the numbers i know you're a numbers guy you're happy with these numbers 15 yeah, 12 the numbers, nine. the numbers jive i do like the numbers <clears throat> yeah those those speak to you uh, JR 15, 12, nine. Yeah. A couple things I noticed here. The box step up is actually sneaky, harder movement than overs. I think overs are a lot faster. You don't have to open the hip at the top and just that little extra range of motion is going to make that already grinder type movement take a little bit longer to Taylor's point. I think it's, you know, it's simple. You, you start the workout with the tank. So it's a tank push before each round and not at the end. And then you end on the nine, nine. So that's, you know, when I look at it, that's the only thing I see. Um, anyone who's done any form of pressing, whether it's like a handstand movement and then also anything with the dumbbells in that hang position, whether it's dumbbell cleans, dumbbell deadlifts, dumbbell lunges, that that antagonizing movement pattern is is nasty on the shoulders. One of my favorite couplets for like a training stimulus is a dumbbell box step up or over, but particularly a dumbbell box step up and handstand push ups. Like a yeah. strict handstand push up. It's a disgusting combination. I love it. So when you look at it, you do think legs, 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 but there's a lot of shoulders here too. I wonder if they could rest there. I wonder if they had to push, like keep their arms extended when they push the torque tank or keep their shoulders off of it, or if they could just push with the shoulders and relax the arms because that would play a part as well. I've been using the torque tank a ton. I use it today. And, you and yet you would never program it in a comp unless they gave you a lot of money, right? Yeah, and there's no telling what I would do for like two or three thousand dollars. You know, I'm pretty cheap. <laughs> <laughs> You'd show your Cheerio on OnlyFans. <clears throat> Cheerio. <laughs> okay, I really like this workout. I just think that it should have been 36, 24, 36. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Total? <laughs> Jesus uh any anything um anything else about this one number two yeah i think it's always good if you scroll down to the chart just to look and see where the delineation was made between using 
the 50 pounders versus going to the 35s and the lighter ones. So here we see all the age groups up to 50 use the heavier dumbbells. The tank looks like it's the same for everyone. And then going from 50 up, they're 35 and 20. So just something to take note of because as we see, every workout didn't follow this pattern. So in some of the, you know, in some of the events, you saw a change in the workout structure or the workout rep scheme earlier. And on some workouts, we saw everyone do the same thing, like on the first one. Uh, those weights right there, th this is an interesting way to think of it. <clears throat> in CrossFit, we, we, we have a men's weight and we have a women's weight. And usually there's some sort of percentage that a relationship that they have to each other that stays consistent, right? What is that percentage? Like women lift like 30% less or something. Mm, that's what, that's, that's some that people thing. will say 70%, but that, that's a, that's a pretty hot topic right now about how we should be, we, we should be approaching that. Like, should okay. there, should there be a standardization of that? Should we redo it? Should we, should we not base workouts on the female side off of the male weights? Or should we do it in reverse? Should we write the workouts for the females and then adjust it for the males? So how do you a, write when you're writing a workout? How do you write, JR? Do you write for the men then adjust for the women, or do you switch no, it I, up? No, I think I, I I think more times than not, I look at a workout and if it's anything that's loaded, I think about the female loading first. What about gymnastics? I usually will think about the male load the 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 male work and then okay. think. Is why is that? Why is that? Is there a reason for that? Oh. It's not bad. That was just a genuine. That was like a huh. That's interesting. I you yeah. know I think a lot about programming, but I have not thought too deeply on who I should think of first when programming. Do you think uh, that's interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Training so, Think Tank did a podcast recently, and I think the title of it is just <laughs> "Is CrossFit a sport that's programmed for men?" And you know it's a good thumbnail because it gets you to click on it. The conversation is awesome with uh, Max and Mia. And Brandon, I just wish they went into it a little bit more deeply. It's talking basically about, you know, if you if you have a barbell movement, typically you'll see something like 135.95 or 225, 155. And almost all always the females will perform better, will have faster times, will get more reps. But then sometimes when you look at certain gymnastics movements, it's the opposite. But then for other gymnastics movements, it's not. So should we be even having them do the exact same workouts. <laughs> should we be, um, should we standardize this and say, okay, for upper body pressing, the scale is nine to six and you just go up from there. But for upper body pulling, it's two to one. You know what I'm saying? Should we, should that be something that the sport releases is this is the way it's going to be so that when you're programming workouts, you don't have a workout that's 315, 205 one day and then 315, 225 the next day. But does it change based on movement pattern for loading? If you look at something like, right. um, if you look at what, what was that? What was the event called? Uh, 2007 reload where they had the right. 235 men's bar and a 140 or 145 women's bar. So it was like the classic 205, 145 loading for women, but then an increased weight for men because they were going overhead. Is And then throughout the rest of the competition, it seemed like pretty standard loading across, but yeah. just that one event was different. It was interesting. Well, it kind of has been standardized, right? Mm -hmm. and, and by standardized, I mean, people, it, it's all relatively close. It, 70, 75%, 65%. Well, it goes into a lot of things. Like if, and I'm going to take this somewhere when we're done. I, this, this isn't the main question yet. I haven't right, even asked right, the main right. question. Go ahead. If you're doing a, if you're doing a box step up, how is that any different than doing a wall ball? If you are already getting a lighter ball, why are you going to a shorter target? So if you're already yeah, getting light, if you're, if you're already getting lighter dumbbells, why do you go to a shorter box? Should, should well, everyone, they didn't, go to, should, a, should, they didn't every, go to a shorter box here, right? They, they did. did not go to a shorter box. Well, not, no, they did. Well, they, I did. Think they, went to, they went to 20 inches. Oh, right. Right. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that I agree with that. You think, well, you just, you don't only think about like bone density and muscle mass in terms of how much loading can they move, but also average size of a female versus average size of a male or height or weight, whatever. I don't know. I, yeah, I and I mean, for, yeah, and I mean, I think the argument is for sure. It, it depends. It depends on the workout. And if you know what you're doing from a programming standpoint, you can say, Hey, in this workout, the tank is really going to crush the women. So using 
35 pound dumbbells to a 20 inch box is going to get everyone closer to what we want. Stimulus wise, re- time wise, all that kind of stuff. But did they flip it down to two, the second setting rather than the third setting in terms of magnetic resistance on the torque tank for women? Who knows? They may have done that. It says three, two on the chart. Oh, it I'm does. Guessing the, I'm guessing the three, two stands for the resistance. Wow. Interesting. Um, I, I don't know. Thinking more deeply about that, I feel like typically when I program rather than program, I, I feel like more than anything, what I'm looking for is a time domain and a feel of the workout. And I make sure the weights and the rep schemes for men and women are, are uh, adjusted accordingly so that they get the right time and the right feel or the right amount of reps of the volume, whatever. Like that's what I think about first is how do I want this workout to feel for everyone doing it? What do I want them to get out of the workout? And then I adjust the loading and the repetitions and the movements accordingly. Yeah. Like here's an example. Here's an easy example. And this is going kind of deep, but if you take the workout 21, 15, nine thrusters and chest to bar, everyone pretty much agrees that there is not going to be much separation in the capacity of males between females to do everything unbroken. So usually you'll see 135, 95 and the times would probably work out pretty close. But if you have a workout that is, um, that is 21, 15, nine thrusters, three, two, one legless rope climbs. And everyone's doing the same amount of legless rope climbs. You would hear some people say, why not make the barbell 85? The women are not going to be as good at strict pulling. Or if you think they are going to be, cause it's only six reps, then add around a four, do 27 down to nine, do four, three, four, three, two, one, whatever. I people see. are going to come back and say, Hey, if you want the times to be more even, then you need to decrease the load of the barbell. And in that situation, I would agree. And I think that's where you really need to be knowledgeable and you need to know what you want. Do you just want everyone to have to do 10 legless and deal with the weight? Do you want the stimulus to be different for the males than it is for the females? Because if you're not careful with that, that's what you get. And I think that's, I well, to to just real quick, I think to go beyond that, I think that's why we don't have the level of standardization that we're talking about is because CrossFit is so varied and so different and so creative and one workout and what you want out of it can, ple- can be wildly different from another workout. And the standardization that would work for one workout could be wildly different for a workout with the same movements. Um, I, I love a workout where you program the same amount of calories for men and women because it's just life is giving you this amount of work and everyone has to do it. That's not all the time. And that's not how I program for most training. But there are workouts where I think that's appropriate. Just like a 2K row is the same for women as it is for men. Or a one-mile run is the same for women as it is for men. So here's my question. Do we have a standardization for the elderly, for the masters people? Do we have a standardization that is, hey, it's um, if, if, if 30 is doing this, 30 to 30, if 30 to 34 is doing this, then 35 to 39 is doing this, and, and you can just do those percentages? Or have we not seen enough masters competitions yet to have some sort of rough standardization for that? If there's a clear standardization, I'm not fully aware of it. And I also think it, the capabilities of masters are so volatile, like meaning that they're evolving so quickly. And so, so we're not there yet. That might come someday, but we're just not there yet. I, I, I think maybe, maybe, but I think in a lot of ways, and this is speaking from an affiliate owner. I'm sure a lot of them would agree with me when the open came out in 2017 and said, Hey, here's your warning. You need these dumbbells. Most people have just stuck with that. They're like, okay, I need a bunch of 50s, I need a bunch of 35s, I need a bunch of 20s or 25s. So what if we're doing competitions and all of a sudden we're like, oh, you know what? 35 and 20 just doesn't work. Like the the masters females are just they're they're doing a, they're doing 100 unbroken snatches. This needs to be 35 and 25. Well then what what happens? You say, "Hey, well I'm going to be the first event that's going to program a heavier dumbbell. I'm going to program 40s and 30s for this age group." And then what happens after that? Everyone's like, well, do I need to go out and buy a bunch of those instead? Like, what, you know, what do I need? And I think most people will base it around what they need for the open and for quarterfinals first. So uh, if I'm hearing you right, if I'm, basically we're not there yet. We don't have enough data. We haven't done enough master's competitions. We don't know, and we don't know if we'll ever, ever get there to where it's like, yeah, the, the people who are 60 to 65 do 50% of uh, what individuals men's do. Well, if human performance is always advancing, what we're always going to have is fitter and fitter people aging up and up and up. So the 17 year olds now, by the time they're 35 are probably going to be able to do what the individuals are doing now. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing. And my, my question is, 
if the premise or the methodology of CrossFit is programmed for the best or in the, you know, whatever the level one lecture program for the best scale for the rest is standardizing a master's loading, even, I don't want to say appropriate or, you know, in line with the CrossFit methodology, but it's, it's hard because if you're programmed for the best and scaling for someone who's not the best, so you're scaling for someone who's not 18 to 34 and, and working out of the CrossFit games, then you're really scaling the workout so that they get the correct stimulus. And if you're scaling the workout so that someone gets the intended stimulus, I don't, it's hard to standardize that, especially through the age groups. I don't know. I, yeah, and it's really tough. I mean, if you, if you don't have different levels of fitness from the 40 to 50 year olds in your affiliate, how can you expect to program correctly for them? If you don't see them every day and see what they're, they are able, able to do. And, and if you are seeing them every day, are these 40 and 50 year olds even relevant in terms of programming for something like a legends master event? I, I wouldn't personally, I'm not familiar enough with, you know, 45 and over of what the capabilities are and what those athletes need uh, to feel confident programming. To answer that other guy's question, I, I typically program in two week blocks. Like, like I will always am a week ahead. I have a week out and then I write both weeks up on my whiteboard and look at the movements and make sure that I have everything needed for the following week. So I'm always two weeks out. I like this guy's, th this guy's definitely masters. This is how old people write on the internet. His name's Robert Jennings. His name's right there, but this is like something my dad would do. This is Bob. <laughs> <laughs> State your name. This is Bob. Bob Robert, here. You're over 50 for sure. <laughs> when Andy this is, <laughs> this is Bob. There is not a standard. Too much variability in injury. I know, I know, but 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 this eventually there has to be some sort of leveling. Like we're getting leveling the increments of of, of how people are getting better or growing up it, it, less and less and less and less in the individual, and eventually it's got to happen in the masters. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, one final question. This shows. Dry. I thought I was going to be done in an hour. Said I'd be back with my family. We're not even close. How are you guys on time? You guys good? Ready to party? I need to get my ice cream. Okay. Here we go. This is totally off this off off way off subject. Have you ever seen a, a, a max rope climb event for uh, seven minutes max rope climbs? You seen seven minutes max burpees? You said uh, Hiller did that ten minute uh, max air squats. I did that the other day. That was a fucking great workout. You you ever seen a max rope climbs? Like maybe something like um uh t ten minutes of max rope climbs, five strict, and then and then your score is whatever you get after that. I've seen I've seen is that a shitty workout? I've seen thirty rope climbs for time come up on main site. You have at least once, maybe twice, not an AMRAP. And then famously what Brooke Entz, Dave and Dan Bailey did seven minutes of ring muscle ups one year as almost like a joke before the open started. So, wow. I, <laughs> when Boy, Andy, damn, to, damn, Bob, to, to go along with how he, addressed. okay, you live in the country then, then you're from one of the Southern States where you just got the internet. When he addressed Something. himself, it reminded me of Andy. When Andy picks up the phone, he goes, Andy. And that's all he says. <laughs> oh, that's Bob who runs the master's event. Bob, you demand. Thank you for doing the event so that we can piggyback and uh, and, and and be like parasites in the ecosystem and make a little cash. Seventeen dollars that we'll make on this episode. I appreciate it. You make cash? Yeah, probably like I'll Jay Hartle. Send me a message song. on Instagram and I'll talk to you all about programming. Stop promoting. Jeez. Let's I just go. told him to send me a message. Fuck off. Hey, promote away. Listen, it's great programming. The, the world needs to see it. Oh, we will get to workout three. Look at Susan telling us to, to fucking run along. Get your ass going. Uh, so, so that, so that's not a bad, that's not a bad idea. Max, max rope climbs. You that, it, it met, like at the games, max rope climbs in ten minutes, and then a four hundred meter run. And so we get to see them race to the finish. F wow, AMRAP. You, I mean, AMRAP four minute AMRAP max rope climbs right into a four hundred meter run. I think would be pretty cool. Yeah. You, okay. Yeah, but I mean. It's not the most important thing, but at the games, you do have to think about the presentation to the fans, to the presentation of the fans online. And unless you have a way to move pylons, to have tickers above every rope, that's that's going to be really hard to watch. You could have someone flipping those signs. Yeah. And then you get to see him run at the end. All right, I'm going to talk to Adrian. Okay. I think 30 rope climbs for time would be an awesome workout at the games. Okay, uh, workout number three. Susan, do you got to go somewhere? Oh, good, good. He just, he's like, fuck, we're at an hour. We're only at workout three. Workout three, five rounds, uh, 18 toes to bar, nine shoulder to overhead, 54 double unders, uh, 11 minute uh, time cap. Uh, 
let's start with something simple. Taylor, uh, do you like these numbers? 18, 9, 54. Um, they're all kind of interesting multiples. Uh no, I wouldn't have really worked out. But they are. You they wanted look, they, to. They you wanted them. to say it's a pretty know. girl. You just can't. Well, well, they make it. Yeah, it's like uh, it's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> what about thirty six twenty four thirty six right there? Thirty. I I like that. I really like. You no, know, you said thirty six twenty four thirty six before, and I like yes. that. I don't know that I've ever written a workout in that rep scheme, but I do like like I like forty five fifteen forty five a lot or fifteen forty five fifteen. I don't know. I I wouldn't have written. A, it's they're good movement combinations. Toe to bar, shoulder overhead, and double under are fantastic triplet. It's a nasty uh, workout. That's disgusting. Uh, so tell me, just off the top of your head, what would you make these numbers if we have to stick with five rounds? Oh, you can um, even change the rounds. I don't care. Change, even if you want to change the rounds. I think, I don't know. I think 90, 45, and 270 is pretty appropriate here. L look at the totals. Add up the totals, and the chunks are big enough, especially on the toes to bar, to separate. Mm -hmm. You assume people are, cannot drop the bar at this level, which is fair assumption. And if you mess up on the double unders, you're already behind. Yeah. I, I mean, I like it. I think I probably just looks a little cleaner if it's four rounds of 20, 10, and 40 and make it, maybe make it a heavy rope or a heavier rope, like a rogue pro rope, not a drag rope or not 10 shoulder to overhead, 20 toes to bar and 30 drag rope double unders for four rounds. I don't know. I, I mean, it, at the end of the day, it's, that's just opinion. That's all opinion. The workout. But, still, but, but, but both you guys like the workout. Yeah. I still, the, yeah. I mean, I still <laughs> think it looks kind of clean. You have multiples of whatever nine. So you have nine, 18, nine. then nine times six is 54. Yeah. You, you could, I think just to the eye, if you start the workout with shoulder to overhead and have it nine, 18, 54, maybe it looks a little cleaner, but that's just like semantics. This is the first time though, if you scroll down where we do see some of the things that we've been talking about into consideration, which I think is really cool. Look at the double under number as the ages go up. Interesting. So the loading goes down, the toes to bar total volume comes down a little bit and the double unders come down a little bit. This kind of shows that they're very aware later in the weekend, they have everyone doing GHD sit-ups. So the toes to bar number, they just don't want to crush everyone with, to with toes to bar. And then, to get the athletes probably all around the same time domain, I would think, and just looking out for the high volume plyometric movement, we see the double unders come down. And then the argument is, well, should it come down by 10 when they get to 50 years old? Like why, why when they turn 50, why not when they turn 55? You know, people will always say things like that. Oh, is 135, 95, uh, significant weight for, uh, Mr. Grubb, Jason Grubb. He, 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 he won that category. Is that pushing the outer limits of those guys? No, Taylor might disagree, but I mean, when I look at the workout, the only thing I see is grip fatigue. And when you're going overhead, even with a barbell, you're still holding something, whether it's not, it's not as grippy as like something in a deadlift position or maybe a snatch, something pulling from the floor, you're still going to get a lot of localized upper body fatigue and grip fatigue there. And how I, I, I think to a degree, uh, I mean, yeah, to a degree, I think it is predominantly grip. Um, uh, David Johnson, uh, I'm assuming he competed in that age category. Not at all. I want it to be heavier. Was this a race? Was David's this, a super was cool it, guy. I met him at the games in 2021. Um, was this a was this a race? Is this is this program so that um, you can pace it and never stop? Is this program so like, hey, you're just moving? For I think some of the age groups, yeah, or at least I guess I hope all of them would be. To that case, how I wonder how many finished this and so so Amy Morton that won this workout, she did it in eight twenty eight. Wow. I'd be curious. Wow. I'd be curious to know in the comments if anyone was able to go unbroken on everything. I imagine that after round three, the toaster bar were probably broken up, yeah. be it on purpose or not. I think uh, for uh, I think Brooke Ends just came out with a she she, she had a movie come out. I don't know how much she was involved in it. Sometimes they just put you down as the producer of a movie so that they you can promote it. But um, but I, I know she just had a movie come out. I, I DM'd her a few times, but I don't have that blue check mark anymore. And so I don't. My, I think my DMs just vanish in people's DMs. But I was going to try to get her on the show. Uh, Robert Jennings, Bob. Sorry, Bob. Bob uh, was working on breaking down the core for the weekend and grip fatigue. The shoulder to overhead was mostly noise. What uh, what what does he mean by that? Mostly noise. Just it's just annoying. It's in the way. There's in the 45 way. reps, so they do affect the other 
two movements, but like he's saying, he's trying to get after the grip fatigue and the midline fatigue. Alrighty. Uh, workout number four. Cuatro, as they say, south of the border. I guess they say it everywhere in the United States now. Cuatro. Three, two, uh, workout four, three, two, two. You guys are going to have to explain to me what that means. 200-meter uh, run buy-in, 75 dumbbell hang snatches. Okay. Mm-hmm. Rest one minute after each round. Uh, Nine-minute time cap. Uh, I'm probably, someone explain this to me. It's an interval workout. So three, two, one, go. They have three minutes to complete the run buy-in and then accumulate as many hang dumbbell snatches as possible until they get 75 reps. Um, and at first glance, I just – so you don't have to do the run by in Taylor, uh, the second and third round. You do every round. Oh. You do the run. You start oh, okay. over with the run, and you pick okay. up where you left off on the dumbbell. I, I like I, I don't like interval workouts start. That's weird. I've never seen an interval workout start out with the bigger number to start, and I think the reason for that is because you want to give them the extra time to complete the work once they're fatigued, not when they're fresh, unless you want them to come close to finishing in the first round. I mean, it depends on what the programmer wants. That's the other thing about this is you have to know what the, you know, we don't know what the programmer wanted out of this, but it would seem that in three minutes, athletes could get really far into the dumbbell hang snatch. Yeah. And he's um, spot on because I talked to Allison Stahl today. She's a local athlete. She competed here. She finished third. And she said that um, she got, I think, into the 60s on the dumbbell snatches on the first three minute interval. <laughs> That's fucking insane. So at that point it was, Hey, we both have to sprint this run. And then we only have, you know, 10 to 15 reps to go. And then our workouts over. Well, you've got so, two minutes and 20 seconds to do dumbbell hang snatches, which is right. And if we scroll down to, and look at the chart, it looks like maybe that run number was, was adjusted up a little bit. It was 250, 200. Then it went 200, 175. Then as you can see down. So, so theoretically, if you finished, um, if you finished it all in the first three minutes, you get to, you're done. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and so, so let, let's Is look at David 75 or 70, 75. So let's look at David's score. 70. So David, so David right. got 59. So what that means for David is he ran 200 meters and then did, let's say, like. let's say he ran 250 and then he did, uh, let's say he did 20 his first round and then the next round he did another 20 and then in the last round he did 19. No, 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 no. I think he's, I think he's saying he got 59 on the first, in the first interval. interval. He got 59, oh, okay. in the first interval, which is to okay. me, seems like they missed a little bit on the distribution of working time in the intervals. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. It, it, that would be interesting. That would be interesting to know why Bob did that. Have you ever seen that before? I've never seen that before either, where they give you more time in the first round instead of the last two rounds. JR? Taylor? No, that's Never. the first time I've ever seen yeah. that. And the only thing I can think is that it was almost done purposefully for you to think that you could do it. And then when you realize that you weren't going to be able to, who can regroup and say, okay, I've, I've got to sell out on this second run. Cause I've got to be first of the dumbbell. If I'm not first of the dumbbell, I can't win. That's the only thing I can think of. Okay. I, and I like that. If the, if, I like that too. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. If you think you're getting close and you're like, Oh, I can finish it. And then you get fucking smacked. You're like, damn. I, I mean, you see it in interval workouts often people get so close and usually it's not the first, but they get so close to finishing and they're like a rep or two or three shy. And when they fucking hit the cap and they have to rest and they're like, fuck, I got to do the buy-in again. I'm fucked. Uh, that. Jethro Cardona, uh, tier is taking over. I have the trainers light years more comfy. Than the noble, I think trainer. a fucking Skechers fucking Velcro shoe is more comfortable than the noble trainer. <laughs> the one with the butt. My fucking butt, grandma's orthotics are more comfortable than the noble <laughs> trainer, dude. Um, Bob from the Legends competition, it was his program. Says if I had to do this again, I would have raised the dumbbell weight. Cool. So by Bob saying that, meaning that way it would have forced more people to get into the later rounds. Yeah. Which is cool. And sometimes you program something and you just even you have it tested. And especially with something like this with so many age groups and so many variables, um, it's hard to get it right. And you look back and you learn. You program and you learn. Uh, Legends Championship. This is Bob's wife. Uh, it was purposely and a bait move. Okay. So so uh, so you guys were – you. oh, wait. Can you put that back up? Sorry. Uh, we were limited to dumbbell weights, so had to make an adjustment to only use 70, 50, 35s, 20s. Oh, Joe. This is Joe. I don't think Bob's wife is named Joe. 
You're this is minded as fuck. It might, okay, I have an aunt Joe. Fuck you, dude. I'm just saying. I think this Logic. is something really important too for, for maybe more so maybe people that don't know all the workouts yet as we're going through them or for um, novice programmers that can look at this and say, okay, well, here's what you do. You just make the snatches from the floor. It increases the range of motion. It increases time per rep. Boom. How much oh, you mean if you didn't have, have heavy enough? You, you mean if you, you have had, didn't have heavy enough dumbbells? You're saying you could take adjust it to the, from the floor. Some some would say that they would be incorrect though, because I do think that Bob and Joe are mindful of hinging movement pattern. We will see deadlifts, we will see sandbag cleans, and we will see a power clean. And I think that over the course of nine workouts, having more pulling from the floor would be irresponsible. So I think just saying, oh yeah, we'll just make him go from the floor again and do 75 fast dumbbell snatches. That's not, that's not the answer. Look at JR shutting down the critics in the comments. They, they won't even matter. They'll still say it, JR. Are there nice people try, in the though. They'll still, they'll still I'm pop not looking. off. I'm not no, looking. no, not in these comments. I mean, in the, in the YouTube comments, someone will still say, well, they should have just taken it from the floor. And you're like, motherfucker, didn't you hear JR? <laughs> didn't you hear him? <laughs> My aunt Joe is not hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But she has hair. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, workout number five, uh, 21, 15, nine. I know that that's nice. That, that makes us feel like we're at home. Uh, power cleans, bar facing burpees, six minute time cap. Nasty. I actually Good think work. when I first started CrossFit, I blew the f my back out so bad on a workout like this. Not to say that this is a dangerous workout. This just gave me a little bit of a flashback. I love the workout. Uh, for J Jr. For the uh, we're we're at the fifth workout. So it, so this is this the last workout of day number two. Uh, you know? No. No. Okay, but but well, we are in day number two or we in day number Saturday, three. Saturday. Saturday is day three. Yep. Oh, I, okay. So we're in day three. This is the first workout of the day. 21, 15, nine power cleans, one fifteen eighty. 80, uh, bar facing burpees. Uh, David Johnson says this one hurt. Uh, JR, this one hurts. Yeah, Jamie Latimer. So that's gross. So bad. Icky, really icky. And I, I have a sneaking suspicion. This probably plays into just as much as the deadlifts, why they didn't go to a full dumbbell snatches when you're hinging like that in a workout for speed. It's just so destructive. Taylor, you're being so guys. nice. Are you going to tear any of these workouts up today? I mean, you are being Dude, so I nice. Dude, I said I hated the fucking machine interval or the machine workout to start. Okay. That's right. as much as you're going to get out of me. These were pretty good. <laughs> and this one is interesting too. And since we since we have Bob and Joe um, in the comments, it'd be cool to hear their take. If you go down and look at the chart, not so much the the weights, but the burpee number and why the burpee number decreased each round to 15 12 6 was it to keep everybody around that three minute sprint and away from the six minute time cap uh, and, and for these people who are competing this is just a go like yeah. if you rest you're not you're not winning this one right it's a yeah it's full dummy full yeah. dum dum and in bar facing burpees you do a burpee and then you jump over the bar and then and then and then you land and then you do another burpee what does that mean bar facing you can't jump sideways yeah, it's not lateral. You have to be facing the barbell when you hit the ground for your burpee. Why does that even matter? Why Why not just let that – doesn't that take away from the athleticism? Why not just let them jump – as long as you're jumping over it, why not let them do the side jump and then the turn and let, and let people start working on what, what allows you to – the most you can, athletic people? You can side jump and turn. You just – when your chest and thighs are on the ground, you have to be perpendicular to the bar. Okay. 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 Got it. So you so you can, as you jump over the bar, do a 180, land, yeah. go down. Yep. Okay. Is there anyone – is there is there room for innovation in this move? Is there anyone – this is going to just sound crazy, but I did see I did see John Wellborn do this at the 2008 CrossFit Games, which was just bizarre. When, when he would clap at the – or maybe it was – yeah, I think he did this. He would clap at the top of the burpee and literally just come back down to his stomach. It was fucking bizarre. You know what I mean? Instead of land on his feet and then go. There was this – there was there was sometimes where he literally would clap and then just – just fall down forward like his feet wouldn't land on the ground his until he would hit the ground, ground. yeah basically so yeah 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 like like he like he would just smack on the ground like a belly flop i think it's <laughs> is there anyone who can do that and the, is there anyone who can do that could you innovate the bar facing burpee so when you jump over you land on your stomach sometimes like you, you see you sometimes superman you see over people, sometimes you see people do taylor's probably seen it you, you'll see it a lot at local comps you'll see people do lateral burpees 
and you'll see them like plyometric push up, like where they'll push up off the ground and their feet and hands come off the ground and they like they they push themselves up over the bar. So they don't bring wow. their feet up and jump. They just wow. they almost try to they almost try to explode off the ground with both hands and feet. It's odd. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it would it would be taxing, but if you were within uh, a rep range where you thought you could manage it, you could probably do. There's probably room for innovation in the in the bar facing burpee that just hasn't been done yet. Mm. Yeah, I think the more we try to put standardization on that movement, other than just chest and thighs, must clearly touch the ground and get over the object. It's it's a it's a mess. Yeah, let's watch. So what I'm saying is, is like, see how she jumps over. Yeah, that's smooth. That's nice. There are as a lot she, of CrossFit athletes that can move like that. That do. It, but what I'm saying is, is as she plays that, we'll play that one more time, Susa. Why not when she jumps over, just goes to see how her feet hit the ground? Why not let your hands hit the same ground at the same time as your feet? It's just too. It's just too much athleticism. Like to just belly flop. Yeah. Probably because she doesn't want to knock the breath out of herself. Right. Who is that? I'm not sure. That's a Florida Grid League, I believe. The Orlando Cobras. That's that was a, a burpee specialist. Okay. Uh, anything else we want to say on workout number five? All right. Let's go to workout number six. The second workout for Saturday, third day of competition. And uh, can you scroll down real quick? Is, is that are we still? Is everyone still doing this workout? Okay. So everyone's still in the game here. Uh, the workout is workout six, 90 GHD sit-ups. Wow. That's no joke. Uh, 12 rope climbs. Wow. 150 wall balls. I'm going to guess there were some DNFs here. Uh, 12 minute time cap. Yeah. And this is like, <laughs> this is the first workout that I read and said, Oh, that's an AMRAP. And I was like, wait a minute, let me go back and look at it again. So I look at it again. I'm like, okay, if they do them unbroken at a smooth pace, that's three minutes. Let's say they do four rope climbs a minute, which is still pretty impressive that's three more minutes and then they do a five minute karen okay we're at 11 minutes what's the cap 12 okay cool it's an amrap for 99 percent of people there we go nobody oh finished. nobody so, finished nobody so finished wow it, okay but no one i don't think anyone at that competition did the 90 ghg sit-ups in three minutes okay listen to this though this one this one this one has rich written all over it whether he programmed it or not. So let's just assume, <laughs> let's just assume, let's just assume that he, let's, yes, let's, let's yes. assume that he tested this. Yes. He yes. finished it. Yes. So wow. one thing we do have now in the 35 to 39 year old division is the, the fittest 35 to 39 year old maybe ever, which is cool. And who knows if he tested some of these workouts, but I could see him seeing this and be like, yeah, that looks fun. I'll do that one. So what I'm thinking about also too, is sometimes you, sometimes you program time caps that are so aggressive that all you want to do is push the pace as much as possible. There's something about getting time capped and failing versus seeing AMRAP 12 minutes that forces you to put out more effort that makes you attack the workout a little more aggressively wow. because, Look because you want to, because that, you want to finish it. Oh, cool. So Rich did it in 11 minutes. Damn, you're good. Okay. JR. Okay, that, that great point on the AMRAP versus the time cap. Um, what what's the most consecutive rope climbs you've ever seen programmed in an event? Is this it? Have you ever seen this? You ever seen twelve rope climbs at an event in a row? I can't remember ever seeing that. No, there's a regionals workout with overhead dumbbell walking lunge and um, thirty pound wall balls that had ten rope climbs in the middle of that chipper at a regionals. Wow, I don't remember how many, anything. And Jamie, then we had, how many had wall balls did you ten get? leglets this year? So did you see that Jamie did the GHDs in uh, under three minutes, and she mentioned one other lady had all, also did it, Allison. Okay, uh, she also took second place. Right. I want to know. I'm curious to see how many how many and wall it, balls she got. Into it the looks league. like uh, Amy was 24 wall balls short, and she got second on the event. The girl who won. Jr. has done his homework. Uh, 24 wall balls short, meaning she so did 126. 126. Okay. Right. Okay. And we can also see, too, if we scroll down and look at the chart. Has Tommy they... V ever been programmed? Has Tommy V ever been programmed in an event? I was thinking that workout, but I don't think it's ever been programmed. It has. It, it has. has. Tommy Regionals. Has. Tommy V was after Randy that same day. But there's not 12 in a row. There is. There is? There is? It's 1296, I believe. Yep. 20, oh, 15, 21, 15, 9, 15, 9 thrusters oh, at yep. 115. 1296. <clears throat> it's, it's, 27 rope climbs it's tough brute 
Coach Mike uh, McElroy, Mick McElroy, McEl Mick McEl Mac Mac Mick Mick. Coach Mike McElroy, 2015 regionals. Okay, uh, w w uh, what do you guys see here? Ba it looks like for the rope climb, it's a it's reduced, but not by much. Nine is still crazy, right? For 60 to 64. Oh, they did have a 65 plus. This is the first time I'm noticing this. Okay. So, so, so uh, any, any thoughts on the adjustments made for the age groups, uh, Taylor? I'm not experienced enough with 60 to 65 plus athletes who are that fit to give you an answer on that. I mean, we have a 65 plus athlete who's a games athlete at our gym and you know, his games training is doing the class workout every day as close to RX as he can do it. Uh, JR, thoughts on this? This is my favorite workout of the weekend, for sure. And I think it still is cool that they have the 65 pluses open up with a set of 60. Is GHD. there, I, I, you know, I had somebody reach out to me and communicate, you know, a high degree of frustration about the event because not a single athlete finished. And why would you have a workout that no one can possibly finish at an event that's, supposedly to showcase masters athletes um i have a thought on that yeah what's your thought and, and a piggyback here's the thing if you have an event where like if you, if you have an event and there's nine events and only half the people are finishing on all the events yeah I, i'm not i'm not too down with that from the spectator's point of view but if you have one event like this and they're thinking like jr said hey, the whole point is, is to just push people as hard as they can, not make it an AMRAP and just set a time cap. It, it does also test the mental piece too, right? Because, because w when you get time capped, you, you got you to gotta regroup, right? There's a mental piece. Everyone failed, right? So everyone kind of gets that. Even if you, even if you uh, win the event, you still got a, a little failure component. So if it was the only one that was like this, I don't have an issue with it. What do you, what, I mean, Taylor, what did you think about the criticism? Um, I, I don't necessarily play into that thought process. I don't care if somebody, you know, if everybody finishes a workout or doesn't, I, I, I guess I care less about that. I mean, I had two events or one event at my competition where really no one had a chance to finish one girl finished out of everyone out of every single division. So I, I don't same thing. I'm not, that's, that's not my primary concern. And they still get to showcase their, uh, they still get to showcase their, um, talents, uh, legends championships. Uh, uh, Joe says a mental test. Who's going to drop the ball. JR. Yeah. Let's say at the highest level, um, let's say the top three from each division, uh, get off the GHDs five apart, get off the rope climbs one to two reps apart and you're watching them. You can just say, Hey, it doesn't matter who's on what number when they get to the wall ball. Whoever drops it between the three of them is probably not going to win. And just watching and saying, will they drop? Oh, there's a minute left. Are they going to drop? Are they going to drop? And then someone does drop. It's, it's, uh, it's exciting in that respect. And when you're warming up and see that no one is finishing, it messes with you a little bit. David Johnson. Johnston. Uh, okay. Um, workout number seven. Now we are into – are we into Sunday? No, the only, the only, the only okay. ones that were Sunday were the back-to-back. -back. That was it. Okay, Saturday, uh, workout number seven. This is the third workout they did. Uh, it's an AMRAP, one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera. Wall walks, deadlifts, 315 and 225. Wow. Uh, six minutes. Yeah, and I think this is a um... – almost like an homage to one of their, I think, online qualifiers. They had dumbbell snatches and wall walks and an ascending ladder in the same kind of fashion. So they kind of go back to that same movement pattern. And we see deadlifts and handstand movements coupled together since the beginning of CrossFit. So, uh, Too heavy, Taylor, 315. Can we scroll down and see what the weights are? Too, no. too heavy for the old guys? No, definitely not. And I agree with Taylor. If anything, I think the deadlifts for the most part, maybe I, for the highest level people are, are more irrelevant that yep. it's a wall walk workout because time per repetition is almost, <clears throat> I don't know, you could probably do four to five touch and go at 315 in the amount of time it takes to do a fast wall walk. 54 year old women, 205, not too heavy. No. no. And this is a, this I is a really, training. this, this <laughs> This I is a really that. good example, too. A lot of times you'll see 275, 185, yep. almost always. And yep. a lot of times you'll see 315, 205. And I think it's great that they're using heavier loads for the females. Wow. Okay. 
God, this is, I think this is the nicest programming show we've ever done. Uh, Anthony TPA, $5. I was at this event, and it was well run. This workout and the D-ball workout had too much volume. Would have been nice to see them finish. Okay, he's talking about the, uh, the previous one. Okay, so this is the first event that the 55 to 59, 60 to 64, and 65 plus did not do. And, uh, what, what's the thought on the, leave this out for them? Is it the deadlifts? You don't want, you don't want to break old person's back? Well, I think you just think about the movement patterns they've already done. So they already had hang snatches. They already had. Oh, okay. And uh, so, sorry, real quick. And Bob says the 50 to 54 didn't do it either typo. Thank you, Bob. I'd be more concerned with shoulders before midline yeah. for most of these athletes. So they got handstand pushups in the final. And maybe that's to Taylor's point that having them go inverted more than once is too much. Uh, what do you mean? They're not going inverted here. I'm missing your reference. Uh, it's a handstand. Oh, wall walks. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, wall walks. Savon, have you watched the Abercrombie doc, uh, uh, doc yet? No, I need to. Justin. Where is it at? White Hot, Netflix, White Hot. White Hot, and what's it about? White, White Abercrombie? Hot. Yeah, I had a- this guest on who used to work at uh, Abercrombie. Oh, that was you. Was. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I'm going to watch the doc, and then he worked there three years. Is that like working at a GameStop, like one of the shittiest retail jobs in America? No, it's like working at Grinder. <laughs> <laughs> JR's like too close to home. Too true. Too, 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 too true. Um, what, what's in it? White Hot? I think that's the name of the documentary. And what's Thank like you. the general hey, premise of it? Hey, Justin, I might watch that tonight. It's like the rise and fall of Abercrombie and Fitch. It's, it's, which I've been told in the past few days has been rejuvenated now that they're selling black and doing things that they didn't do back when I worked for them, that they're, that they've kind of come back a little bit. I kind of still, I can still see some Abercrombie in your style. Oh shit. Oh shit. You mean, cause he's always clean shaved. Hey, he wears a big red puff jacket and pulls his pants down to where his pubes show like these. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't born with that little hair on my body. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Hey, uh, tomorrow's <laughs> guest, tomorrow's guest is going to be the best. Well, tomorrow's show could be the best show we ever did. By the way, tomorrow morning show is going to be fucking nuts. I, I am, uh, I am so freaking nervous about it. Cause I take tomorrow's show. So freaking serious. This is the most nervous I've ever been for any show. I am. I am. Who's coming on? Uh, Garrett Glinton. It's a friend I made through Instagram. Uh, she has an uh, amazing story. Um, but basically, she was – we'll find out if this is true. But she, this show basically red-pilled her. And I feel like it's like one of my crowning achievements. And she is – I've talked about her a lot on the show without referring to her by name. And I, I think you guys will piece it together. But she, it is going to be an amazing story. This show blue-pilled me. I think <laughs> you went and got the vaccine seven times I after this show. I just got my booster, bro. <laughs> Is this the guest that you said you think will come on when they're ready? Yes, yes, yes. And 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 now, it, well, I didn't. I I, I, be, I befriended her, and I didn't want to. And I didn't want to like. I, I wanted to make sure that she knew that I wasn't befriending her just to get her on the show. But did she basically text me like, "Shut the fuck up! I'll come on anytime you want." And I was like, "Wow, okay, let's do it." Uh, but, but maybe I was just making that shit up cause I'm scared cause I don't want to fuck this show up. I probably will cry tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be fucking nuts. Uh, Kenneth, I'm uh, so what, excited what to meet her. Uh, 7 a.m. Pacific standard time. So 10 a.m. And there'll probably no talk about programming. So, no, <laughs> I, I love listening to a good, like freaking, you know, JR, I was a store manager at Abercrombie and my name is actually Jethro. Wow. He would. Wow. Did you guys know each other? Did you guys ever go to like, you know, employee improvement functions? No, but I can tell you right now. There you go. You got you got two what I'm guessing are Latinos that are hired in management positions. That's what the whole Netflix documentary is about. about Does how the they, J stand for Jethro? Right about how now? they were how they were able to um seek out minorities for their uh, re, uh, for all their positions because they wanted they wanted they were, they were ahead much, of their time they, they wanted as much diversity as possible in the workforce and as you'll see in the documentary it was their way of 
being able to say that person isn't attractive enough so that we're not going to hire them. Dude, I will say this. Like I grew up in a really, I went to probably a uh, middle school that was probably 80% Hispanic, 10% white, 10% black, and like some change of Asian, whatever. And the Hispanic kids always wore the fucking Abercrombie and Fitch. Fitch. I can't even pronounce it. Like the stonewashed jeans with like the holes in it and like the destroyed, frayed belt. Destroyed denim. Yeah, and the frayed belt and like the little freaking, you know, Polo I had no shit. idea. I thought it was like Beverly Hills white kid brand. No, I had no dude, idea. It was so Hispanic for sure. And yeah, like yeah, Echo Unlimited, the Abercrombie and Fitch, like all that crazy. It's interesting. I never thought of that. Just uh, when I think of Abercrombie, I think of mall food. I think of it's the clothing. I think of it as just like mall food. I just think of it as mall clothing. I think of like Axe body spray. Yeah, and puberty. Look <laughs> at those fucking jeans, bro. <laughs> Yeah, so this is actually this is actually a crazy story looking at jeans. So I, I showed up my first day at Abercrombie. And um when I was playing basketball, I wore oversized polos with tall tees underneath them. Oh my um, god. All white Air Force One. <laughs> oh my god. That's hard. That's more hard. than more than relaxed, more than relaxed fitting That's jeans. And so I showed up in like um baggy jeans and like the biggest t-shirt i could find um because they said hey you have to dress kind of like you know just think california whatever and i think i wore flip-flops and they were like yeah dude you gotta take those jeans off and it's like well they're not our jeans i was like well i don't have any money to buy hollister jeans yet and so they were like well here just go put these on what size is your waist and i was like i can't wear these they're the tightest things i've ever put on my entire life dude it was crazy. i but will say like, but they were like you're not you're not promoting the brand in those those clothes like what we want to portray for the people coming in to buy the clothes wasn't the right right work outfit i owned a pair right. of chocolate suede air force ones in the eighth grade like but like like they were the off different colors of brown like milk chocolate leather and then dark chocolate suede <laughs> holy shit Whoa. i tried on a pair of those jeans once and my <laughs> testicles just came out of the hole <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing hiller wears if you can't see the outline of Hiller's penis, you don't even, <laughs> he, 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 doesn't, he won't even put him, he takes him off. Yeah. <laughs> it's truth. It's not even a joke. Uh, okay. Uh, what, 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 uh, workout eight. Workout yeah, eight, eight. Eight and nine are back to back. So uh, two Sunday steps, morning, two guys, we are going to do a show. We're going to have Scott Tetlow on and Colton Mertens on uh, prior to um, them banging it out uh, on. Whoa. um the fittest of the 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 fightest fight did that work that thing that's happening on Hiller's YouTube channel that Wad Zombie created it's not midget porn Fit and <laughs> it could be uh Scott Tetlow uh very impressive uh guy uh Colt Merton's very impressive it is going to be a really cool show prior to the show we'll have each of them on basically the way we're going to run the show is it's going to be as of now I think we have a uh, JR and Chase coming on they'll give their predictions then we'll bring colton on and talk to colton a little bit and then we'll bring uh, uh tetlow on for a little bit and talk to him and then we'll follow up and see if their predictions still stand after we talk to them uh, we may have a third person on uh, we invited brian on but he will be watching world cup the final event and if you don't know brian used to coach uh women's soccer or something like that and he is a, a diehard soccer fan and he, he wanted looks to like he to acts like a women's soccer coach <laughs> and he wanted me to extend his apology for not being here, but um, this is but, gonna be awesome. But he has addiction. This is gonna be awesome. It's gonna. This is gonna be nuts. If you guys, if Scott Tedlow came on the show briefly uh, earlier this year. I don't know if you guys remember. I don't remember who it was, but I think Scott Tetlow and a guy raced to the finish line. I do. Hal Fisher. Oh, Hal Fisher. Oh, okay. Um, and and who 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 won the event? Was it Tetlow won it? Tetlow and Hal Fisher. I think Scott goes won and, and Hal. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Scott won, and Tetlow went over to him and like tried to high five him, and Hal told him uh, you could see said hey, get the fuck away from me. He's like you motherfucker or something like that. Yeah. Scott's the man. Scott's one of the nicest guys ever. <laughs> and Scott the man. told he them, told "Hey, dude, shit. that better not come out of your mouth again." They ended up hugging and kissing and and making up. But it was a it was a pretty funny story. Uh, just some some intensity at the at the finish line. Do, do I, we know the I workout? We don't. Uh, they released the equipment 
Um, so we will be able to talk about. Um, oh, that's right. What Rings, we speculate. 45. Uh, what it is. And then so shortly after the show's over, you'll be able to switch over to Andrew Hiller's YouTube account and actually watch it um, all go down. OK, workout number eight. JR makes the games this year. He should dress up like his Abercrombie days for a preview show. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, workout gets released on the live stream. Yep. Uh, just prior. Um, we will we will learn the workout at the same time um, they did. They do. They did. They do. Workout number eight, Sunday's first workout. Oh, my God. That means the show's almost over. Workouts eight and nine. Oh, shit. This is it. Uh, Two-part workout. One-minute rest between workouts, 12, 9, 6, bar muscle-ups, front squats, uh, four-minute time cap. Um, I guess you get to rest more than one minute um, if you – depending on when you finish. Correct. And then you – and then you go into uh, JR says correct. And then you go into a six nine twelve strict handstand push up. Sandbag cleans at one hundred and fifty pounds. Three minute cap. Yeah, and I think this is a this is a really cool way to have two scored events. I think to have something to test recoverability, and in this case, pretty quick. I think the fastest time was just under three minutes. Uh, for the 35 to 39 year old ladies for this, I think Amy was right around three minutes. So she had a two minute rest before going to the second one. And if you look at the time caps, less aggressive time cap on the first workout versus the second, we can assume that's to push the pace. But I think this is what someone was talking about earlier about no one finishing this workout. Taylor, nine sandbag cleans to the shoulder, EMOM for three minutes. Not the easiest thing in the world, right? So 27 reps. <laughs> so essentially they're doing 27 sandbag and then they have to also do 27 strict with the transitions in three minutes, which is really, really aggressive. I was really, I was, aggressive. yeah, I was looking at the strict hand stand push up like rep distribution in comparison to the bar muscle up. I was like, there's just no way that's equal. Like the a bar muscle up rep is not equivalent to one strict hand stand push up. But when you look at it in that context, um, with how short the time domain is, I, I don't know. I, I think I like a four minute cap with maybe, a, you know, 15, 12, nine strict handstand pushups. Hey, this is beautiful. 12, nine, six, six, nine, 12. You got to love the numbers. Uh, you got the bar muscle ups and front squats, and then you have completely different movements, right? With strict handstand pushups, you get inverted and then now you're picking something off the ground. And, and for those of you who are slow, like me, what JR was saying is JR added up that six, nine, 12, and he gets the number 27, and he's saying even to do 27 sandbag cleans without the strict handstand yeah. push-ups with the 150-pound bag is yeah. insane in three minutes. And so to do it with the strict handstand push-ups is uh, – I love the choice of movements. I, I don't I, normally stick my nose in this, but this is what, a, what an awesome uh, four movements in the way they're paired, correct? Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. what they've done so far this week, um, this weekend, like they've a lot of divisions did 90 toes-to-bar, 90 GHD sit-ups, some bar facing burpees, um, some wall walks. So going into this, we're, we're still waiting on some more gymnastics. And I think it's cool that on these last two workouts, they picked some higher level skill gymnastics movements. I, the only thing I can think about with the straight handstand pushups are typically in the older age divisions, especially in my gym, when you've got people who can do them at all strict, it's a huge separator. And you see a lot of people being able to do bar muscle ups and not as many seeing being able to do straight hand, handstand push ups, be it a body position issue or just a strength issue. So maybe that's why they left it the same rep scheme, just the opposite direction to one, push the pace and see if anyone could finish under the three minute cap. But also because they understood in some of those divisions, just getting through a set of six or getting through the nine was going to be enough to really separate yourself. I think I think six nine twelve strict and sandbag cleans is without a doubt doable, even for a lot of the athletes in the field in three minutes. But I don't think so after that first part. Right. Maybe. If you scroll down, you can see kind well, of that's... how they made the distinct, how they separated, like you know the 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 deficit and that kind of thing. I'll so also... Taylor, this is this is what I was going to ask you. Actually, it's funny you say that. If they would have reversed those workouts, if they would have opened with that first workout, do you think anyone would have still finished? I th yeah, I think yeah. fresh. I think fresh. I, without a doubt, could finish that. I think plenty of the 35 to 39 and even some of the 40 to 44 could finish. Um, 
Then, then let me ask you this. Then would they have finished the bar muscle ups and front squats after that in four minutes? I think st some still could have. Okay. But, but I think I saw in the comments that no one finished. No one finished part two as written. Correct. Okay. So do you think that, let, let me, let me then ask this. Um, yeah, I can do strict hands. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm five foot five. You see these fucking shoulders? I wear a size large. You wear a small, dude. I'm sending you a shirt. Or fucking large. Can I you do handstand push-ups? I do handstand push-ups on your mom every night. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I so, so why not reverse it so everyone can finish? Why not reverse it? What if you would have started with the strict handstand push-ups and sandbag cleans? Hey, and you know what's not even fair? The first time I ever did uh, strict handstand push-ups, I just did 10 in a row. And, I, and I'd never done one in my life. So there, take that. And I was a fat kid. I also think, and this is just, again, personal opinion, but I see like across all of the workouts, a lot of multiples of six in several workouts or 15, 12, 9, 12, 9, 6, 18, 9, 54. I also, and JR has written a couple workouts like this, and I think he's one of the first people I saw do it, and I love it, but I like multiples of seven a lot as well. Just a thought for Bob and future program. Like seven, so what, would that, what would that look like? You're saying – what like 14, 7, 21. It would be not particularly in this workout, but other workouts, 7, 14, 21, um, et cetera. I like that. Like seven minute AM wrap, 14 reps of this, 21 reps of this, or 14 minute AM wrap, seven reps of this, 21 reps of this. I like multiples of seven are pretty as well. If you don't understand the importance of numbers, then I recommend uh, binging on meth for like six months of your life and getting some deep paranoia. And that, will, it. that will allow you to start appreciating numbers and shit. Um, and, and that, that's what gives you that appreciation for weird numbers and shit. You start thinking about your birthday and like on 12, 12, 12, you trip and shit like that. Just so beg for money behind Fuddruckers. <laughs> yeah. So anyone who doesn't understand the numbers thing, uh, uh, JR, would you be okay reversing these? Is there some reason why it has to be like this? Do you give a shit? Joe yeah, had an, O. Oh, I like the reversal idea, Bob. I think Bob went home by the way. Oh, no, there he is. He's still there. This is, yeah. That's also one of my favorite rep schemes is 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. I love that. Ascending. Mr. Howell. Did you yeah, I think, the question? Oh. yeah, I think for a lot of people, they're just going to look at it and say, well, why not just add on another minute to the second part? That way you have two four-minute time caps. <clears throat> but again, if the point of the workout was just to see who can do strict handstand push-ups, then I'm sure they, they succeeded in that. I think reversing it probably allows for more people to finish. There you go. Race on the sandbags. Cool. Bob is finished. There you go. There's the intent. Okay. Let's go down and uh, Legends Championship. Oh, let me read what Joe wrote too here because uh, I so appreciate you guys being in the comments, by the way. Uh, simple, quick, exciting to watch. Had to go unbroken on workout eight and fight on the sandbag in the 12s. God, I wonder if there's some good fails there. I should go back and watch that. I love a sandbag fail, like when they get spit out from underneath it. That shit's awesome. Did they go to the shoulder or did they go over the shoulder so they could go touch and go if they wanted? A good question. Uh, Kenneth DeLapp, is this Taylor and Jair's tryout for Programming Legends 2023? <clears throat> I'm yes. sure Bob would do a much better job than me. I do not know enough about Masters. Uh, Bob and Joe told me um, this whole show was their idea and they said uh, they wanted me to interview them. Uh, Br uh, David Johnson and Bruce Wayne to the shoulder. Okay. What, so, what yeah, was the other right. option to throw it over the shoulder? Yes. Yeah, so if you go over the shoulder, you, you, you cannot cycle any faster. You can just turn around faster and pick it back up. But if you're able to go to the shoulder, release a hand and then come back, then you can, you can touch and go that. JR, would you ever program heavier medicine ball cleans in a workout in a competition? Uh, like foundational movement med ball clean. Yeah. Ground no. to the front rack. Why? I'm curious. Uh, like a light squat clean, would you be able to just get the ball off of the floor, pull yourself under it into a squat, and then just reach full extension? Would that be the movement? Because at that point, I yeah. don't think it's a med ball clean. You can bastardize it, but I think if you make it something like 70 or 50 pounds or even 60, 40 pounds, it's really hard to do that efficiently with a high number of reps. Well, then at that point, why don't you just do squat cleans with, with a 100 and a 70? Oh, you just want it. You just want it to shoulder? be lighter. But in Correct. the front rack, in the goblet, it's just right. You just so you want it to be like a goblet, yeah. I don't know. Would you if you saw that? Would you think it was stupid? I I, I really want to see it in competition because I love medicine ball cleans. It's one of my favorite, and they're savage in a workout. I did a workout one time. I think it was a, I don't think it was dot com, but it was it was 
50 medicine ball cleans, 25 shoulder to overhead, 50 medicine ball cleans and with a 30 pound ball and 155. And it, it was one of the most painful workouts. I do. I do D ball, um, squat cleans with a 70 pound D ball. And yeah, but squat cleans to the shoulder or like, no, no, no. To the front, to the front. Wow. And how does that feel? I, it's well, once you get going, it's really smooth because you'll yeah. find, you find the pattern and you, you're just basically you're, you're base. I, I don't do it the way they teach in the L run where you just rotate your hands. I roll the ball up and I get into a smooth pattern. So you're, you're performing a fault. You wouldn't pass the level four. Um, no. just kidding. I, but do you, when you do it, do you reach full hip extension opening up? Like, do, do you open all the way up and then get, Oh, the knee, I think I do. Under? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know what? I really don't do a squat clean. I'll do, I, I, I really, to be honest, I do a clean and then a front squat. Oh, Maybe wow. on the last set, I do a squat clean, but I'm so fucking old and rickety that I have to start <laughs> with doing anytime I'm doing squat cleans, I really just do a clean and then squat just to get the stimulus. I don't get the athletic component until the end. I have to be dripping sweat. Okay. I want to go down to the bottom. I saw something about hand release, which makes me think that the older people were doing push ups. Is that no, that's that a standard that was... on the sandbag. So you get it to the shoulder, you release one of your hands. Get oh, the, okay. Get the good call to show control, and then you can touch and go or drop it. Jess uh, Kres Kresmian, that's almost an Armenian name if it was I-A-N. We had to stop at the shoulder and release your hand above the hips. Okay, this shit was hard. Uh, what is this uh, riser thing kipping? Okay, so the, the 50 like, and above class was allowed to kip the handstand push-ups. And they, and yeah, they so that's it. what this is saying. It's saying that – sorry, Taylor. It's saying that the, the men did bar muscle-ups, did strict handstand push-ups to a one-inch riser, and then the females did chest-to-bar pull-ups and kipping handstand push-ups. Oh, oh, okay. Wow. wow. Was there any grumbling about that? Was there any grumbling? Wow, I don't know if I like that. Can we be critical of that? Why, why don't the girls have to do uh, bar muscle-ups? I don't like that as much. Either. Well, I don't know. I mean, it depends on how do the athletes view it. Look at this. The 65 women only had to do chin over yeah. bar. Hey, have we seen um, uh, bar muscle ups in a 65 over comp? Bueller? If I can do a bar muscle up when I'm 65. Yeah, all that's the, savage. All the age groups at the CrossFit Games last year did ring muscle ups. Wow. I will say this. We started the show, and I think it was Taylor who said if there was a movement that you would be concerned about as people got older, it would be over uh, too much work uh, on the shoulders, right? Was it you or JR? Basically, you want to limit the stimulus on the shoulders. Not not take it out, but be cognizant of it. I said that like five minutes ago when they were oh, – when they, okay. When I thought it was the beginning of the show. All right. Well, fuck. I've been in the car for eight hours today. Uh, Bob, Bob, no one grumbles to you. You yeah. fucking run the event. They're scared to death of you. No one's going to talk shit to you. They're scared to death of you, Bob. We'll we'll tell you. We'll, Bob, we'll let you know what's good and bad about your event because people are honest with us. No was the rep scheme the same, you. Bob? Was the rep scheme still 12.96 on that? Uh, I, oh, I, I see what you're saying. Uh, you would think it is, right? Uh, n no, I would actually think it might be like 18, 15, 12. Even though it's chest to bar and uh, just chin over bar, even though they get it down to that, yeah, just because a bar muscle up is quite a good bit more difficult than one chest to bar, I would say. See, I, I want to see this. I want to see sixty-five year old women do eighty-five pound front squats, racing, and, and sixty pound sandbags. That's a, that's crazy, dude. I did see some links when I went to the the website to to watch some of the live streams. So I think you can still go on and watch some of it. Ah, uh, there we go. See, I knew it. Joe, Joe grumbled him off. Mm -hmm. uh, all in all, uh, fantastic workout, right? Uh, I, th I think uh, you were saying that the um, the rope climb one was your favorite. GHD rope climb. What was the uh, the final movement? Uh, wall ball. And and I'm going to say that this one right. is my uh, favorite. This is this is great. I'd love to watch this in the crowd. Uh, yeah, just talking to some of the athletes. I think one of the depending on what type of athlete you are, it's always, does it fit your, your prowess or not? But if you noticed over nine scored events, what did we not see? We did not see a traditional strength event. So a lot of people maybe that need that in a competition to make, make moves or to expose that someone isn't one of the strongest athletes. They're left with their hands in the air saying, Hey, where's the, where's the one rep max? Where's the three rep max? Where's the whatever. And you can, yeah, you, you could argue in some ways that, that this front squat is going to get heavy for 27 reps or that the 315, 225 deadlift 
slowed a lot of people down or that, you know, that there were heavy elements to it that still created some separation and it still showed who the strong people were and who were not. And then other people like David commented, I wanted the dumbbell to be heavier. And that's probably an argument for if there's not a strength test, then the elements within the workouts that you do have need to be heavy enough to show who the strong people are. But none of you, but neither of you sound like you're being critical about that. And if not, why no, not? I, I, no, I like, I like that. I've always been a proponent for non-traditional um, strength tests in a competition that's not the CrossFit Games. Wow, interesting. T Taylor, do you have a problem with their uh, – Joe says from the Legends Championship, we did a strength event for five years straight, wanted to change it up. Do you have a problem with there not being a, a, I like a strength event? I prefer there not being a traditional like one rep max strength event when the workouts are like six to eight events total across a weekend. I, do, have you been doing ecstasy or some shit? What the fuck is wrong with you? My voice? No, you're just fucking happy as a clam. I've never seen you so just like, what are you doing? Ecstasy? Yeah, Molly That's what I've something. Been doing. Molly, Molly, Molly. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, so so someone was saying that that these all these workouts had TV show names. Scroll up. What's this TV show? Old school's a movie. Hotel okay, erotica. maybe they okay, maybe they were movie names. Okay. <laughs> I want them to name a workout Hotel Erotica. Okay, sudden that impact. Show. That was a Clint Eastwood movie. Grand Torino, another Clint Clint Eastwood movie. Wow, I didn't even pick up on that. Benjamin Button. Okay, that one can be changed. That one, every, no one's perfect. Endless Ergs is the only one. Saved by the Bell. My goodness. They should have named Endless Ergs Hotel Erotica. That was my favorite show growing up. Movie. The old Cinemax late night. <laughs> Skinamax? What's CJ? What's CJ? <laughs> What is that a movie? Skinamax. Skinamax. <laughs> you never heard that? I have not. That's funny. Uh, oh. Uh yeah, Taylor is straight edge as fuck. That is uh correct. That is correct. No joke. Okay. Um, overall, uh, Taylor, summation of this event and the the programming of the event. I mean, I, I'm very impressed because according to all accounts, it was run very well. And there were so many divisions, like so many divisions. You got so much going on, not only just the depth of athlete, like how many people are there, but think about all the weight changes and scorecard changes and judges briefings to get all of that right from division to division. Um, really impressed with that. Love the programming uh, for the most part. You know, my biggest gripe was just the machine workout to start the AMRAPs. It's just not my flavor, but. At the same time, it's a good test. Um, so overall, loved it. Uh, Bob, CJ was changed to honor an athlete son who passed. Mm. Good job. Nice work, guys. Community. Uh, thank you. Uh, so Taylor, thumbs up. Wow, hat off even. Jeez, Luis, thumbs up and hat off. Uh, Mr. Howell, JR Howell, uh, overall the programming. I thought it was good. I thought there was a really good mixture of workout formats. You know, you had the, I guess, two interval style workouts, one like seven minutes on, one minute off, seven minutes on the machine. And then you had the three, two, two intervals. You also had a recoverability type test where you had a workout for time, rest and reset, and then go again, both for two 100 point workouts. You had um, triplet, you had some couplets, um, you had a chipper, even though it was only three movements, still a chipper, just like Jackie. Jackie's not a triplet. It's a chipper. Um so you, you, you had a lot of good variation there. The only thing that I'm curious of is other than the 21-minute workout, everything else was uh, 11 minutes or under or 12 minutes and under. I think the wall ball workout was 12 minutes. So Maybe, maybe that's seeing, the master's piece. Maybe that's may, the master's piece. Maybe that's the volumes piece. Yeah, yeah. maybe seeing something in the teens um, still too, like getting one that's a little bit longer um, would be cool. It's winter time. Uh, I have to pee so bad that my bladder is going to explode. Does anyone have anything final to say? Workouts look fun. They look cool. Great show. Uh, Masters Legends Comp, thank you very much. Bob and Joe, uh, seriously, greatly appreciated that you uh, jumped in the comments today. Uh, honored to have you guys there. Uh, so I mean, awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah, very cool. Uh, really guys, cool. tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, the best show we're scary show funnest show most excited show uh i really uh this is cool and to meet someone that i've been texting with for a long time and uh, get to hear their story and i think you guys are going to be profoundly moved and will bring a lot of understanding and compassion to people who are um have strong opinions on many issues all right
See you guys tomorrow. JR, Taylor, thank you very much. Matt Souza, love you. <laughs>